Hey, you guys, welcome back. Okay, here we go. Fuck it. I don't even care anymore. Guys, welcome back to a new episode of the Maddie Chipper Podcast. Holy crap, we're not having technical difficulties at all. Um, let me just change it a little. Is it better? Yeah, it seems better. I don't know. This thing is all new to me. I mean, I, I, one week it sounds good. One week it sounds like butthole. But guess what, guys? We're here nonetheless. Thank you for listening. I'm closing out my windows every week. Uh, like I always say, if you're new, thank you for taking a chance to click my face and listen to Daddy talk. Um, it's going to be exciting. I think you'll find something you like. And if you don't, then you are a tough cookie because uh, I'm pretty sure I hit all the all the topics. And guess what? Uh, for you to just not enjoy any of them is uh, highly unlikely. So, um, but that regardless, thank you for clicking the link and returning people, man. I got to say, you guys are the best. You make it worth it every week. And uh, we're starting to have fun. We're starting to get more views, get more comments. And uh, I really appreciate it. It makes me more excited to come back to do this stuff. I um, seem a little flustered. I was trying to film a video. I just put it out. If you're watching this, it's the one I did about pre-workouts. I was having a tough time with it. Um, for those of you who don't know, I do a lot of videos on Instagram, uh, some of which are just very, sh- most of which, all of which, every which, uh, sandwich. Okay, guys. Jokes are always going to happen on this podcast. Um, all my videos, short, funny skits, very relatable, uh, analogy-style comedy. I, I play multiple inanimate objects at once it's pretty crazy but regardless I just uh filmed this one about a pre-workout I was having a hard time with it when you have an idea people sometimes I mean regardless if it's a comedic venture or anything I mean you have the first idea then you think about it then it becomes another idea then you think about it more then you're like I don't even know what it is anymore it does this like kind of like uh there's a term for this chart I forgot what it's called but basically at the beginning you think it's a great idea then you think about it more and it goes down to this pit of despair as they call it on the chart if you guys know what chart I'm talking about comment below it has to do with people um, pursuing things I think it has to do with ideas anything creative or idea driven um, but anyways, at the beginning, it's great. And then it goes down to the shit pit of despair where it sucks. And then it kind of, the more you think about it and the more you get better, uh, it, it you kind of come out the back end. So sometimes with these videos, I swear to God, people, I don't even know what I'm doing. I mean, I get an idea, then I think about it, then I film something and then, Hey, don't mind the saw. I mean, it's, it's 440 and they're still doing saw work somewhere. Um, but yeah, so sorry about that. Anyways, um, Filmed a couple ideas, and uh, the first one sucked. Basically, I was trying to play like a scenario where like if I were to drink coffee before the gym, you kind of push back on it. It doesn't give you enough oomph to go to the gym, so there was that kind of interaction. And then I went to a one with me in pre-workout where I um, – I, the pre-workout was very sketchy, had like a fake cocaine on its nose. I was – threatening it was very because when you take a pre-workout it just gets you so amped and very crazy and then I was like eh I filmed it it was whatever and then I uh and then I I put it together too I was just like what the f is going on and then I took a shower I was gonna do this and I thought of the idea I just posted where it's funnier where the pre-workout's very sketchy and the whole idea is that they're so good and weird it seems illegal so I had the coke on the nose I'm acting sketchy I did a couple more vignettes um or scenarios in the thing that I didn't put in the final product of the video but anyways I just got done with that I just put it out I'm not gonna look at it for the next 35 minutes uh which is um in the world of posting things I don't know if any of you do that it's tough I train myself not to I try not to look at things within the first hour because Right now, I'm very, the the wound or, it's a new baby, and it, I'm scared to see it fail or or even succeed. I don't know. I don't, of course, I want it to succeed, but right now, I'm, I kind of ignore it to let it live its life. I'm like a, a mother bear, and I'm starting to let the kid wander off. I'm not going to chase it. So, you know, I, between me thinking of the idea, uh, filming it, editing it, that was the nurturing phase. And then I kind of let it go on its own for about an hour. I really shouldn't even look for a day because sometimes I get really mad at myself and I, if it's not doing well, I delete it. But anyways, right now it's out there. It's kind of just, uh, it's, it's learning how to walk and it's, uh, hopefully it's running, but anyways, I, uh, I hope you guys take a peek at it. It's uh, it's silly. 
and uh, it's just a thing that I I don't know. It's weird. You're you're seeing me. This is the first time I've ever posted and literally put my phone on my tripod. Yes, I recorded this with my phone, and immediately went right into. Sorry, I keep fucking thinking I see shit. I'm like losing my mind. Um, this is the first time you're seeing me where I film something, I post something. I mean, within seconds, I posted it, and then I put my phone on there, and I started filming this because I have a show in about – I have to – the show's later, but I'm meeting friends for dinner who were on the show, so I got to get out of here relatively soon, and uh, you're seeing me in the moment. This is usually a private thing where I'm kind of uh, freaking out, seeing if it's going to be good or not. And um, it's interesting. I got very mad earlier. Sorry. if I, I'm very like, when I get angry, I just start getting like ADD because it's like, I'm mad about the noise outside. The effing heat is on in our building, which is good. I'd rather it be hot than cold. But this thing, there's no thermostat. If anybody knows anything about heating, typically it heats to a certain degree and then it shuts off. This thing just pumps you with air. Uh, like you're a goddamn basketball, and it doesn't stop. And now I have to open my windows, which I can't because it's freaking noisy out. Because they're we got home improvement Tim Allen downstairs making a new building apparently. Uh, and uh, yeah, I got a lot of things happening at once. So the show I'm going to, I mean, the you know, it'll be fun. We're gonna have a good time. It's one of those shows. I don't even know. Sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to be jaded lately. This is the second show in about a week where I was just like, I don't even want to do this anymore. I do, I do want to do comedy, and I'm being selfish. I just don't want to do these shows that I'm like, I don't even know what's gonna happen. Is it gonna be bad? It's probably not gonna be good. I did this one show for this lovely person. I don't even want to say the gender. My friend recommended me for it. I kind of this woman show, anyways. It was uh. I showed up. It was this weird venue. I, I didn't know why. I thought it was going to be good. And then I showed up. It was at this Greek restaurant. And it was. It started late. People were just talking. There was no, like, stage. There was a mic in the corner. And, you know, as a, as a, pers- a performer, I mean, at some point, I've been doing this for 12 years. You're like, I don't want to do these anymore. I don't want to, like... It, and, and I'm going to put an asterisk in this. I was like, I don't want to do these anymore because it's, like, it's such a mess. You're, like, competing for attention uh, it's chaotic. I don't even know what the F is going on. And then I kind of, you, you have this like kind of devil's advocate moment where it's like, if you want to be good though, you should do this. You can graduate when you're too busy with good shows, but when you don't have all the good shows, you have to do this. And I feel like, uh, those make you better. Like if you're in a room of people and no one wants to fucking listen to you and then you tell you, not only do you get them to shut up, you get them to pay attention to you. That's when you know you're doing good. It's really like just a boot campy, like what the F I know this is going to, I'll learn something. It's making me perform in an uncomfortable environment. So, um, I, I left there and I was happy I did it. See, so people don't always shit on them. I almost left. I literally, I was at the show with my girlfriend, and I was like, God damn it. I, and I was looking at her, and I was just not in the mood, like, creatively and career confident-wise. I was just in the shits lately for reasons unknown. And we're just sitting there, and I'm like, I don't want to do this. Like, what the F? I just did a weird show last week where I had to, like, it was a bar Halloween show, and I had to follow a kid who's really, he's very funny, but he's loud, and the crowd was, like, all rowdy, and I was, like, I was so hungover. I was not in the mood to, like, I don't want to say match his energy, but I was just not in the mood to, like, just be loud. I was like, dude, I'm dying. I The night before, I got fucked up. Um... I was just trying to get by, and I was so anxious. I was just in my head about things, and uh, that's kind of how I felt at this last Greek restaurant show, Um, but I did it, and guess what? It was fun, and the lady paid me a ton of money for how little time I did, which is the shit, and... uh, so anyways, I'm busy as shit, did the video, did my doing this podcast now. I got to go to dinner, which that'll be a nice break. Uh, excited to see my buddies, and then I'm going to do the show, which uh, whatever. Sometimes, and I start, so I know the past couple weeks, I've been preaching how I quit my job um, four months ago. It's been crazy. It's been awesome. 
And uh, over the last five months, six months, arguably, my old company, not the last one, the, the one prior to that, has been reaching out a ton. Hey, do you want to come back? Do you, you know, this, any other? And the whole time I was like, one, no, I'm good here at my last company. And then when I quit, I was like, you know, I quit. I want to pursue comedy. And uh, thankfully, I've been busy with videos. I've been financially, you know, covering my overhead, which is crazy to think about. And then uh, a week and a half, two weeks ago, my old company hit me up again and they're like, hey, do you, you know, we have these couple projects coming up. Uh, you can do part time. You can keep doing your thing. You know, would you consider helping us out or whatever? And honestly, I, uh, I, I said yes. I mean, it's the holidays. My days are open. What I'm learning in like all this creative stuff is like, you it's not like a day job where you're like kind of black you're just like checking like to do things off the list i mean when you're i'm busy with videos i'm busy writing but it's like that can only eat up so much time of your day and uh i have my couple brand deals coming up are kind of in the interim of the contract thing so i'm like you know what and i i'm not for how little work i have to do for those I, uh, I just decided to do it. So I'm, uh, I got my, I got two construction projects coming up. I just wanted the money. I'm, I fucking love money. I don't know how, I mean, I say yes to everything that involves money. I, I, people are always like, you can't buy happiness. I'm like, well, it can buy fucking, uh, not money stress. It can buy me the opportunity not to stress about money and covering my rent and not feeling like a fucking loser and that has nothing to do with people who are struggling with money but I'm like I took this path of not having a standard job and the last thing I want is to you know people more so my family thinking I'm a fucking turd and guess what um yeah, I'm doing this construction thing people every week I talk about how I'm effing stressed out and then you hear me ramble off the four billion things I'm doing and uh, I bet some of you are like I mean obviously you're stressed and uh, I hope you guys are learning from me to make sure you're uh, doing what you can um, to not uh, freak out and have your eyeballs pop out because you're so <clears throat> stressed out but anyways let's make this funny can we be funny, Matt? I mean, I'm sorry, people. I know it's fun to be vulnerable on here and talk about this stuff, and I shouldn't care, but um, yeah, I don't know. I want to be silly. I want to be a silly bitch. I just went to the job site, though. I do want to talk about that, and uh, it's just crazy to be doing construction again. How quickly you can forget everything. I literally walked in there. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I didn't say that, but I thought it, and uh you just forget things. Four months, that's a long time to just completely check out of the career you used to do. I mean, I and it didn't to the point where I was like, am I, do I have amnesia? Like, why am I forgetting things so quickly? Was it that not fun where I just black, blanked it out in my brain? I was, you know, I just didn't want to remember it. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I don't know, but uh, I walked the project with my old boss and people and I was just like, oh boy. Um, I don't know. It was, uh, in that moment it made me appreciate, which is kind of like a blessing in disguise. I feel like, you know, taking this project, I'm excited to just, you know, get some steady income rather than have to chase down these fucked up companies who dick your boy over. That sounds weird. Um, uh, but in that moment, and I guess it's a blessing in disguise. I was like, damn, I just want to do comedy. I don't want to do construction anymore. I don't want to do construction. I don't want to do it anymore. I, uh, I, it's like going back to your ex. You, th you think you, you, you missed it. You, you, you romanticize things. That's like any breakup. You break up, uh, and then for a month or two or however long you are in this phase, you romanticize what it was. You romanticize all the, you remember all the good times. You, you can't really think about the bad times, and when you do, you didn't. You don't really put them on such a high of a pedestal as you did when you were in the relationship, and then you go back to them, and then you're like, "Oh, I fuck this. Don't want any of this." Uh, I see. Then it flip flops where all the good times are like, "eh," and all the bad times are like, "ah, fuck that. That sucks." So that's how I feel with this job. I feel like I left, and I was like really thinking about all the good things, and. Um, and how, oh, you get paid and you're on a schedule. You don't have to stress about shit. 
about, you know, stress about like, you know, where my next paycheck's coming from. You just show up, you leave work, your work is done. And then, uh, and then I'm looking at comedy like, I don't know what I'm getting fucking paid. And then, uh, next thing you know, you're literally about to run a project again. You're like, oh, I forgot. And now, now I remember. Now I remember why I didn't want to do this as a career. I mean, if shit hit the fan with comedy and I had to go back to construction full time, I think I can flip my mindset of like, you know what, comedy, it was a good run. We had our, we had our ups and downs uh, and I'm just going to do construction. I'm gonna f- I would do it at a level like my, I keep saying old company. So company A was the oldest one. Company B is the last one I left. So company A is the one I'm with now. Company B is the one I was previously with, you know, right before I pursued comedy full time. I would go back to like a company B. If I was going to quit this creative thing altogether, I'm not going to, but I always tell myself like, I think I would like construction because I would really pivot and be like, I want to just be all in. And company B was like a, eat, sleep, and breathe construction job. And uh, I envied the people there. I'm like, they were, that was the first time I had a job where I was like, you guys are literally people that uh, I can see you like your career. I never thought people had a passion for career jobs until I worked there. And I was like, oh, they generally like this. And I was thinking about it. I was like, I think you can when the job takes such good care of you that you start to like look at it as like you start to appreciate the job because of how well it takes care of you. Like for example, in construction, I would see a lot of these guys where they got good salaries, they got great bonuses, the co- the perks were good. And although the job itself was so stressful and shitty, they fell in love with the, with the reward aspect of it. And in turn, they're like, this is what I love to do which I'd still question if they even like to do that. I don't know. I feel like a lot of people, I don't know. I feel like they fell in love with the job. So what's that like? Let's compare that again to a girl. I mean, sometimes uh, in a relationship, maybe you fall in love with the perks of the relationship and not the job, a.k.a. the person themselves. Wow, this is getting pretty deep. It makes a good, good, makes a good point. I mean, some people, let's say, what are the perks of a relationship? Hooking up. Uh, maybe visually lo- the looks. Uh, what else? Some other, you know, some super fish. Maybe her family's rich, and you get to do cool things. You know, so you're and you're in love with all the perks of the relationship. But then when it comes down to the job, aka the person, you know, you see some people that you're like, I don't think you like that person. I think for some reason you like the idea of all of it, and you're the 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 upside the cool bonuses and all that shit is keeping you in this in turn f- making you um think you like the person and i don't think you like the person so uh what am i trying to say i love con- i love comedy i think the perks of comedy are actually it's the flip flop again we're really flip flopping people i hope you guys are enjoying this and me, me realizing these as analogies and i hope they're clicking with you Wherever the where the heck you are in your lives, I gotta fucking go soon. Um, that's why it's tough. It's finally clicking. It's fucking. I love comedy. I like the. I like the it for what it is at at its core. But there are no perks. Like the the few perk the perks come so far and few that I'm like, what the fuck? This sucks. It's so frustrating. And then I go back to the job and or relationship and I'm like dude what the fuck you know like I know there's perks down the road of the cool stuff you know whether it's the good shows that we're talking about or the uh maybe more money in that more steady money so much money you don't even have to care about the regularity of it coming in uh and that's just the the new phase that I'm in People, you're seeing light bulbs going off in your boy's dome. And it's actually making me... See, this is why I do this podcast. I mean, I want to be silly. I do see other podcasts where they're goofy, silly all the time. And I think I can do that here and there. I think you guys find humor in the nuances of what I talk about. But I think it's, for me, is a therapeutic tool to talk through this stuff and realize that 
I like the perks of construction. I don't like doing construction. I like comedy. I'm just getting my ass kicked with the lack of upside perks now in comedy, even though they're starting to come in. And uh, it's a good reminder. But uh, with all that, I mean, I'm still going to do this new job. I'm still going to, you know, do the best of my ability. I do find joy in the little technical, statistical aspects of it, which I even apply to my comedy now. Um, but I, uh, I think it's a good, like I said, for the third time blessing in disguise that I'm doing this and it's actually pulling me away from comedy. And I'm like, you know what? See, I want to do now when I leave that, I'll come back and be like, you know, I think I can find more things to do. I think I can, uh, I can be more appreciative of it and all that crap. But, uh, I'll appreciate Greek shows at restaurants. I mean, you always hear famous people say, they they missed the days where they weren't a thing, and I uh, you know it's very pompous of me to walk around being like I enjoy this because one day I'm not gonna I'm gonna be so famous and I'm like all right psychopath shut up but uh, does it hurt to you know think that a little bit I don't know I don't effing know what the f do I know I'm a dumbass uh, I'm not a dumbass I. Uh, I wish there was a way to like measure your uh, common sense because I feel like a lot of people um, have it and a lot of people don't have it. And ironically, I think a lot of people who are considered smart don't have it and a lot of people who are not considered smart have a ton of it. And that's interesting to me. I feel like a lot of like comics, they're like, they're like social opinions on things or they're, they're fucking smart as shit. And then you hear about their like, scholastic uh resume and you're like well you're on paper you're fucking stupid but uh what do i know i uh it's always interesting to people know what i watched recently i watched that documentary killer sally and uh she's a good example it was two bodybuilders and they were married and it was an abusive relationship and they long story short she killed her husband i don't want to ruin it for anybody there's so many little ins and outs of it i'll leave it at that Ah, fuck it. If you're watching this, you're going to get to spoil alert. So don't, uh, if you're going to watch Killer Sally, I'm going to spoil the, the shit out of it right now. Um, they were, I don't know. She kind of seemed like autistic. I don't know. I met people like her. That's what I'm realizing too. Like you ever look at somebody and you're like, I've met, I've met you. And that's where I real, I, I'm curious if there's a thing where as far as humans go, there's like 10 different types of people like, you ever meet somebody and then you meet somebody that looks like them and they oddly act like that other person? And I'm like, do we just have like eight varieties of people and then it's just duplicated and manipulated enough where it seems like there's more people than there are? I have that feeling all the time. I can name like, there's like five people in my life that all remind me of each other and they actually look like each other. And it's fucking mind-blowing. And it makes me think we're in a goddamn simulation because that's insane to me. I even see other people, I don't want to say who, but like they kind of resemble me or we grew up in the same region and we have similar, we kind of like, I don't know, we kind of look similar and we don't. And we still have like the same, same thoughts. And like, I don't want to say same thoughts, but like, I'm like, that's that's interesting. No, it's one person. It's, I don't want to say comics names, fuck it. But uh, yeah, there's people where I'm like, you and you are like the same person. You have the same fucking like nose and you talk the same, I don't know. Anyways, uh, Killer Sally, she was a big old grunt of a woman. Very sweet. I mean, these fucking Netflix documentaries, what's pissing me off with them is that they are telling you the full story. By the end of the uh, the series, you got the full story. What I don't like is that they purposely withhold information per episode to fit the narrative of that episode. So by like the end of episode one, you're like, I know exactly what's going on. This guy sucks. She's innocent, blah, blah, blah. And then episode two, they trick you and give you all the dirt on one person and talk up the other person. So now you're like, now I have no fucking clue what's going on. And then the next episode, they talk about all this and you're like, I know what's going on. And then they do, they flip flop it. And it's like, I get it. You got to tell a story. You got to keep it interesting, but it's frustrating how I'm seeing it 
as like it's laid out per episode of like, okay, this whole episode, we're going to talk her up and make him look bad. This next episode, we're going to talk him up and make her look bad. Uh, this one, we're going to talk about the incident and withhold facts again. Dude, we just talk about this with goddamn Dahmer. So it flies in my face. Um, we talked about this with the Dahmer thing. And uh, it's just like annoying. I don't know. I, I still enjoyed it. But by the end of it, you're like, oh, you made something that's arguably not that interesting, way more interesting, one, although I still liked it as a, a thing, so you guys should watch it. But it was an interesting thing because the whole premise is how this bodybuilder couple, she was with this guy, and they were she, he physically abused her. Apparently, you know, she was abusive as well, but, you know, he, the kid's account was like, he was hitting her, strangling her, all this psychotic shit. And long story short, one night, um, and, and and with all this happening too, this is where they kind of leave out facts where you're like, I don't know what to think anymore. Um, this motherfucker changes. I'm not crazy. It's fucking changing. Sorry, my background changes. I don't know why. Uh, do I have one of those kinds? Anyways, um... What I found interesting is that it's this whole self-defense thing and how, you know, he used to beat the shit out of her and blah, blah, blah. And I think at the end of the day, the man has to be the more responsible one. Uh, But, you know, she was claiming self-defense and then, you know, it's like one of the, uh, how she put it was like, you know, I'm either going to. God, it's so hard. She was like, I'm either going to keep getting beat and get killed or do something about it. So then one time he was like, uh, you know, abusing her and then she got a gun and shot him. And then, uh, long story short, she killed him based on the guy, like the whole fun of forensics and, and everything. They realized that there was one of the shots was, you know, the guy was already incapacitated. That's what I'm learning with us. Like true crime shit where you're like, if you shoot per- some, somebody once, in self-defense and they fall down, you can't shoot them again because you're technically, you're, you're not in harm's way, way anymore. So that's where they got, not they, but that's what happened in this whole documentary. It's pretty interesting. But, uh, the whole self-defense thing where you're like, you know, you feel this lady, like, you know, they get tricked where it's like battered woman syndrome where they're getting the shit beat out of them. And then they fucking still love the guy, like some hoe pimp shit where even though the guy's treating her like shit, it's like a, uh, they see like security in a way, I guess. I don't know. Um, so then, cause in my head, I'm like, well, why don't you just leave the person at night and whatever. And then it's this weird, like, they're getting beat, they should leave, but then they stay because of whatever psychological shit's going on. So you have, like, these two, like, fucking magnet, magnets where you're, like, you you got to pull each other away. I don't know. It gets you thinking. It's a good thing. And then the series ends, and then you're sitting here like me being like, what the fuck's going on? Although they were both were pumped with steroids, so that can't, uh, can't help anything. Speaking of steroids, I've been taking horny goat weed, which is a natural testosterone booster, and guess what? You boy be staying skinny. Don't work. Uh, I remember one time I used to go to this uh, place called Vitamin World, and um, I do like working out. I've been going to the gym every day. It's fun. I mean, watching those documentaries, you're like, I want to get fucking jacked. I don't want to take steroids. Although you're like, isn't that crazy? If you just took steroids, you would get fucking jacked. I think about that all the time. And um, I might be late to this dinner. I got to wrap this up. Anyways, this guy, uh, he was selling me horny goat reading. He goes, you're going to want to fuck or fight everything if you take this. And I was like, should I take it? And he's like, I think he realized that he kind of embellished it quite a bit. And he's like, yeah, you'll be fine. You're good. And I'm like, don't sell stuff like that, you psycho. Um, so anyways, I am currently taking a natural testosterone booster. And I will be um, aggressive and crazy. No, I'm just kidding. I'm a very soft pillowy man who makes videos about uh doing pre-workouts and uh that's about it so guys sorry i got this short thank you for listening i hope you found some nuggets of information in there that makes you think throughout the week and you have fun and you laugh and you come back next week when i will be here again and uh there will be less saws outside and if there's more we're gonna go outside and figure out what the fuck's going on but anyways guys like subscribe comment love you thank you so much bye